leaders in developing clean water technologies. I can't think of a better venue to make today's announcement than among our leading clean tech companies, showcased here at Discovery. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Honorable John Gerritsen to Discovery 2010. Thank you very much, Tom, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here at Discovery 10. Uh, it's truly amazing what's happening in Ontario with respect to the clean tech and with respect to new discoveries that we're involved with in this province on a day-to-day -day basis. And what the announcement today is all about is trying to export that tremendous expertise that we have here uh, in Ontario uh, to other places around the world. And so I just have so, uh, a few uh, uh, comments to make here and then I'd be more than pleased to answer any questions that anyone may have. Just behind me are a few of uh, Ontario's companies who are developing products and services for the uh, burgeoning water technology sector. Well, they're not behind me actually, they're right in front of me and all around me. We all know that as pressures on water continues to grow from climate change and population growth, the world demand for clean water and water treatment technology will just keep expanding. And we are serious here in the province of Ontario about making our province a competitive leader in that in industry. Now let's be absolutely clear. We want to export our know-how, not the bulk export of water, but the know-how of water technology. We want to make Ontario a leading North American brand when it comes to new technologies, products, services in water and wastewater treatment and conservation. Now later on today, I intend to introduce an important piece of legislation in the legislature of Ontario. And that's our government's proposed Water Opportunities and Water Conservation Act. As part of our Open Ontario plan, the act if passed would lay the foundation for innovation in this rapidly growing global sector, drive investment and create good high paying jobs for Ontarians. And we're focusing on three key outcomes. First of all, to make Ontario a leader in the development and sale of te technologies for water treatment and conservation around the world. Secondly, to encourage sustainable infrastructure and conservation planning within Ontario using innovative technologies. And thirdly, to encourage all Ontarians to use water more wisely. Now key to achieving these outcomes would be the creation of a water technology acceleration process project. This new corporation would support research and development as well as the commercialization of new technologies and innovations in Ontario's water sector. We plan on creating partnerships with academia, industry and entrepreneurs along with the ministries of research and innovation, Ministry of Energy and Infrastructure, Economic Development and Trade, and Natural Resources, and Municipal Affairs and Housing. Now, just as importantly, we are focusing on transforming Ontario from being a, waste, a water waster to a water conserver. Ontarians, as we all know, use an average of 260 liters of water per day. And we know that we can do much better than that. The proposed act aims to encourage efforts that would significantly reduce Ontario's residential water use. For example, in Germany and the United Kingdom, the average water use per day is about 150 liters. We know that water efficiency is the most cost-effective way to generate additional water and wastewater treatment capacity. Investing in water conservation and innovative technology can avoid or defer significant infrastructure costs. Ontario examples demonstrate that cost conservation programs by municipalities may be as little as one quarter that of the new infrastructure that would otherwise be required. If passed, our proposed legislation would also allow us to bring in water efficiency standards for consumer products such as faucets, shower heads, rain sensors, and other pieces of equipment. It would also allow the government to require standardized information about average per day water use on water bills and enable government facilities to demonstrate leadership through water conservation planning. Now we plan to consult widely on the proposed legislation as we move forward, as we already have met with many of you 
in this room today. Our government's bold and aggressive and visionary approach would help provide solutions to one of the world's most pressing environmental challenges and put Ontario's expertise on the map. Ontario companies have what it takes to make significant inroads in the global water technology sector. Over the last couple of years, I've had the privilege and pleasure of seeing some of these companies doing great work both here and overseas. Orange County, California, New York City, North Holland, various other places. And it's something that indeed all of us in Ontario can be extremely proud of at how our water technology companies are doing excellent work around the world. But much more is required as we anticipate there to be a 40% shortage of water around the world within the next 20 years. Creative and innovative water and wastewater sector businesses already employ over 22,000 people in Ontario. We know we can spur on even greater growth, more economic opportunities and good sustainable jobs by building on our strengths, by encouraging efficiency, conservation and innovation. So with the proposed Water Opportunities and Water Conservation Act, we're going to put Ontario water tech on the map. That's the aim of this. And so uh, I, I know that this is something that uh, many Ontarians have been looking forward to. And I look forward to working with many of you in this room as we uh, uh, progress in this very important work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. Uh, thank you, Minister, for choosing Discovery to make this very important announcement today. I'd like to uh, now invite the Minister to take a tour of the water area and the clean tech area.